Welcome to Art Is. Today we're going to continue our series on the Birmingham Museum of Art with its significant collections dating from ancient to modern times. Over the past 15 years, the Birmingham Museum of Art has been organizing an excellent selection of African art. Dr. Manuel Hordan will now give us a tour of the African Art Gallery. This is the African Art Permanent Collection and the objects that I have here uh, to my right uh, are sort of like an introductory section uh, to the areas that are, that are explored throughout the gallery. We have some really fascinating objects uh, from the African continent. If you look uh, back here at the back of the intro introduction section, there are some pots uh, from the country of Mali. These are really interesting because they're round, uh, soft uh, forms. They're uh, basically utilitarian objects. They're used to hold grains and water by people, and they're very simple. But if you look at uh, some of them, uh, they have details that include uh, animal figures that are molded into the surface, and uh, so including uh, one human, a human figure. Uh, what's interesting about that is that these are uh, symbols that relate to uh, protection of the pots and the food that it contains. And it also relates to the theme of fertility. If you look uh, closely, you see that there's a tortoise, a chameleon or a lizard, and a female figure. The female has a umbilical cord is uh, represented and that uh, emphasizes the idea of birth and continuity in life, which you want in terms of uh, uh, food and uh, you know, being able to maintain the society uh, to you know, progress into the future. Uh, the tortoise is an interesting animal because the shell protects the animal and we want the uh, pots to be protective of the food uh, that we keep. Uh, also, their animals last a long time, and even when the tortoise dies, the shell remains, and it's uh, you know very powerful. And the lizard also, it's a, a theme or a symbol that relates to uh, regeneration, in the sense that we know if a lizard loses its tail, uh, another one is going to grow. So these are themes that uh, people apply to everyday life uh, and to the items that they hold uh, in hopes that there is going to be continuity in life. Another uh, really important piece uh, in our collection is this wonderful EPA uh, mask from the Yoruba people of Nigeria. And you will see uh, that the mask is composed of a Janus or double-faced uh, uh, head at the bottom. And that is crowned by the image of a hunter uh, or a warrior riding on a horse. This is an ancestral masquerade. And it's a mask that it's uh, performed uh, to bring, uh, again, the same idea of fertility and continuity in life. It's used during uh, harvest ceremonies and uh, it weighs a lot, it weighs about 60 pounds and a man would have to put it in his head uh, and he would have to run and leap over a mound that sometimes is like four to six feet in height uh, and if he does that successfully, it means that there will be a good harvest. Of course, if he doesn't, there are all sorts of rituals and ceremonies that have to be uh, performed to make sure that life uh, goes on in a positive way. But the image of the ancestor as uh, a horseback rider is uh, what would be equivalent in our society of uh, representing your uh, great-grandfather driving a very expensive car. So if you're going to honor somebody uh, in your lineage, in your family line, you want to represent them you know, looking very good, and that's what you see here. Uh, items of uh, Yoruba style, you see the very large eyes, over proportion heads, and that's because they believe that the head is a center for the spirit or for spiritual life. And the eyes are a point of connection between life and uh, a spiritual side of things. A very, a very nice uh, mess in our collection that you can come and see here in person. Uh, these are uh, posts uh, uh, made by the Giriyama people of uh, Kenya. Uh, they are uh, really interested in the fact that they represent ancestors, but really uh, they are carved after somebody uh, in your family passes away. Uh, they are meant to honor uh, specific people. Usually they have the name of uh, you, you know, one of your relatives that passed away. And what's interesting is that they make a little hut. It's like a village hut. Uh, for people that have passed away, for your ancestors, that people go once in a while and visit and uh, to keep in touch uh, with, with those relatives that were important to your community. So there will be a human village on one side and a village of ancestors on the other. And these are themes, uh, the idea of contact uh, with the spiritual realm that are very important uh, in, in, throughout Africa. Well, you know, basically it was, it's interesting how in the Western world, first we looked at it as a pure curiosity, uh, and uh, many African countries were colonial powers of different uh, European nations, and uh, things were collected uh, kind of erratically. They, people would go in and buy 
uh, or, or get a, a spear or a piece of stick along with a great work of art, to them it was all curious uh, anyway, it didn't really matter. Uh, eventually, much, much later, people started looking at these things with more interest and it wasn't until this century uh, with people like Picasso and Braque and other uh, uh, Western uh, artists that they started looking at this art as something, uh, you know, very interesting visually and objects of great power. Uh, they influenced uh, certain modern art movements and uh, it was only after that that uh, we started really looking at African art for what it is, you know, great uh, works of art that represent uh, cultural and social values for uh, the different communities and that are not only beautiful uh, in terms of art but also very uh, significant in terms of representing aspects of their culture.